This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. It's over, the Karen Brook saga is over. Did um, you enjoy it? Unbelievable. Yeah? You, you enjoyed it? Honestly, yeah. the, the, you don't really get to watch it from the corner, so I'm going to have to watch it back, um, you know, back afterwards. But what an atmosphere um, in, the, in the old um, MEN Arena, or whatever it's called these days. And, uh, you know, it was a performance. Um, they roll back the years. I, I, you know, what? I look at that fight and I just think, you know, what, what would Khan been like if he'd gone to Bormack a lot earlier? Because he took some big shots from round one to six and he got through them. So, you know, they've done something with him. Uh, they've trained him in a, in a way where he can take shots. It's like, you know, Kel Dayton, but you look at his face in the press conference, he's, he's, he's you know, battered and bruised. But he kept, he kind of kept on his feet all the way through. So, you know, you've got to give him credit. He's obviously put the work in because he's, you know, he wouldn't have got through otherwise. So, yeah, what a cracking fight. Yeah, the first two rounds were very good. I think the general consensus was the only round that Amir won was the second round. Right. But it was a very entertaining start to the first two rounds. Yeah, yeah. Is that how you saw it as well? Sorry? It was a very entertaining yeah, start yeah, to the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I say, it's, you know, it's the result. It's, um, <coughs> it, it's, it wasn't a result I didn't expect. I thought Kel would, I thought Kel would beat him. And I thought, people asked me, if you're, if you're a betting man, what would it be? I said, between four and eight. Uh, and he got him in six, so, um, you know, a couple of years back, how would it have been different? I think Kel would have took him a bit longer. I think it would have probably took him between eight and 12 to get him. Um, but, you know, that's just how it's panned out. And as, as, you know, he's come to the press conference afterwards and he's explained to everybody and talked to everybody, and, you know, fair play to him. He's, uh, he's carried himself well. Good stoppage from the ref. Yeah, because, you know, you know he's a very good referee, Victor Lachlan, and, you know, he could have jumped in any time, probably from round four to six. But he gave Khan uh, every chance, you know what I mean? He gave every chance to come back because he knows he's a, he's a seasoned campaigner and he'd seen him taking big shots and come round in the middle round. So he gave him every, uh, every possibility to, to pull himself around and eventually he just saw too much because Kel was getting closer and closer to the big finish. So, you know, a, a well time stoppage. Was there any points where you thought Kel was overreaching and, and getting a little bit wild? Yeah, there was, you know, but we, we talked about that and I just said to him, look, you're going to catch him and when you do, there's going to be times when you think, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to sling one in here, you're going to miss because he's still quite good on his feet uh, and he, he, was, he was moving around quite well. And I just, he, he threw probably, probably in that fight, probably four misguided shots. But I just said to him, compose yourself, it's only going to be straight shots, first six rounds, of, they're going to be the killer shots. You might get a left hook in every now and again, but it's going to be the ones and twos that are going to catch him. That's where it's going to be. So keep to the straight shots whenever you can. When, and when he did lunge sometimes, he didn't miss. But, you know, that, that, that was part of the plan. Keep the shots nice and straight down the pipe. Keep moving him backwards. Uh, and then when he starts to slow down, then starts running the hooks and uppercuts. Mm. But overall, stuck to the game plan, Dom? Yeah, stick to the game plan. He's very good at sticking to the game plan. You know, when yukon has got a good sweeping uh, left up jab type of shot, comes back with the right hand, flurries. You know, Kelly had it all worked out and uh, he said he never hurt me. As soon as he came back to the corner, Kelly was within 30 seconds, he was breathing, he was fine, he was back out again. And he seemed just kind of set off the gas a little bit and compose himself, uh, you know, because he knew he, once you get somebody like that in three rounds and they're all over the place, Kelly never really gets them get off the hook. 10 years or 15 years of bitterness, um, but we just saw a lot of respect between the pair there. That's good to see, Dom. Yeah, because you, you know nobody wants to see two fighters being all loving of each other and you know accommodating. You've you've got to have that live aura. Uh, you've got to build it up, and you know whatever they think about each other, they don't really know each other. So when in the build up, all the animosity comes out and all the uh, you know the anticipation is building. So they don't want to they don't want to talk nice to them. It's like Ricky used to say, it's not a tiddly you know tiddly wins competition, is it? It's like it's hitting people in the face. So. You know, that's what they did and afterwards you realise Kel gave him respect because he took some big shots and you know um, can't give Kel the respect as well at the end he came into press conference usually they don't come in when they've been beat and marked up but he is he knows how to play the game of Mia he's been around a long time you know he's a nice enough kid I think but at the end of the day he's got to be a winner and a loser and ultimately it's Kel who will decide what he does next yeah you know we're not even talking about that look the, 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 the emphasis was always on this one fight you know, Kel's climbed up the mountain so many times and it's, you know, it's the same view wherever you be. And you have to question yourself at the end of it. He, the, the one thing is, you know, I know Kel had trained off for that fight. He put himself through it. Um, it. It was a pleasure, this camp. It was probably the easiest one. And he just went, oh, we should have done it. He's always trained hard. But mentally, it was easy for him because there was a big prize at the end of it. Uh, and it was great to see him at the end for the 
10 minutes after the fight, the big buzz, and he's now he's a bit of a come down. So, you know, he might, he, he might even call it a day on that and say, that's it, I've done what, what do I need to do anymore for? That's the fight I've always wanted. He can only, he can't really get better from here. You know, he can only actually go worse. So you've got to have to sit down and think about it. So we'll see. Dominic Ingle, thank you very much for your time all week. Congratulations on a, on a brilliant win and display. And uh, I'm sure we'll speak soon, all right? Cheers. But I wanted to pick up a comment that Kel made yeah. in the post right yeah, yeah. where he said, you two fight each other. Yeah, why not? You know, Conor Ben's young enough. He might have to come up with a couple of weight classes. And New Banks can always come down. He makes the middleweight uh, division easy. He showed that the other night. Uh, you know, that'd be an interesting fight. Why, why you know, make these legacy fights? Ben and Eubank again. You know, it's better than, you know, Kel and Eubank or Kel and Ben. Let them have a fight. It's, you know, it's an interesting. It can be done. It can be made. You know, people are going up and down weights all the time now. So Kel went up two weight divisions for Golovkin. So, you know, from 10-7. From, uh, you know, might be a problem because they're different promoters, but that'd be a fight, wouldn't it?